Hey guys, it's me, Missy, with Rustic Relics. So you can see I got a pretty good haul here today, and I'm going to give them an updated spring kind of vibe. Um, I love springs, my favorite time of the year, so let's get started. Okay, so I have this metal cross picture hanging thing. So I'm going to give it a coat of fluff, and then I, I did two things here. So I went around and I did the outside in fluff and then I was like, oh, I'm going to do this outline right here in vintage duck egg. So I started to paint it vintage duck egg. But then I realized I didn't want the center cross to be gold. So I have to go over it and put a coat of fluff on that. So after I did all this work with the vintage duck egg, I'm going to have to uh, come back through and paint it all back white and then go back through and do the vintage duck egg. So live and learn. So I'm doing the, the fluff here and I'm not worried about getting it on the other pieces. It's fine. And then I'm gonna like give the base of the picture a second coat too. So that way it's nice and full, fully covered. Then I'm gonna let that dry. And here is where I'm coming in. Oh yeah, with the paintbrush and touching up the inside of those pieces with the fluff. Okay, so now I have just a sand and sponge and I'm just going around and distressing all the parts that I want to be distressed. The let some of the dark metal kind of show through and on the big cross too, kind of like lightly distress it a little bit too. Now that I've cleaned it from the dust, this is where I'm coming back through with the vintage duck egg and I'm gonna outline the outside of the cross. And then this piece will be done. I did come through later on and seal it with a coat of the clear coat by Dixie Bell. Uh, just that way it's good and protected and it's easier to dust and stuff like that. I really like this piece. I thought it was much brighter than how it originally was. It was, I like it a lot. So here I have two little hanging planter things. I decided to give it a coat of the dry sage um, just to kind of give it a more updated look. So I'm going to go through and uh, just give it a coat of the dry sage. I'm going to end up doing, I believe, two coats of this one. And then after it's all nice and dry, I'm going to go through and just white glaze it and brush it on and wipe off the excess. And then you've got two little hanging planters. I also put a clear coat on both of these. That way, if you wanted to hang it up on your door and it was in the weather or something like that, it would be uh, very protected, be able to withstand the weather. But I like the dry sage. So I got some fluff out, and while I'm doing that, I'm giving these little bunnies a, a good coat of the fluff. And then I just take a sand and block and kind of sand it to make sure that it's nice and smooth around the edges. But I thought they were really cute. Then I have this little old sew sewing drawer. Um, and I added these feet to it a while back, but then I decided to give it a coat of fluff and then there, you see that ink? Like you could not see that ink before I started painting and then the paint just made the ink come out. So I thought, well, I'll go ahead and give the base of it a coat and then figure out what I'm gonna do with the center. After looking at it, I decided to try it again but it still bled through so then I went and grabbed some silk after that was all dry and kind of sanded smooth and I'm using a deep sea I think and I'm just giving the inside of the drawer a coat of the silk and the reason why I did that was because it's your all-in-one paint and then it's your, your primer your top coat so it's guaranteed not to give you any of the bleed through and because this is an old drawer, I decided to give the outside of it a coat of silk too because the wood was bleeding through my fluff. So 
again, this was another live and learn craft experiences, <laughs> but it turned out really good. So I'm really glad that I ended up going this route. So I have this uh, decoupage papers, which I'll leave a link to it in the description. Um, so I'm just using some Mod Podge stuff and I'm going to decoupage it to the side of the drawer. I'm going to do both sides and then I'm going to set it to the side and let it dry. I really, really like this uh, decoupage paper. I'll leave a link to it in the description below too. So now that it's dry, I'm just going to cut off this excess and then I have a little piece of sandpaper and you just want to sand down until the decoupage paper just breaks away and then it just really comes off and it gives you that clean line. And then here I'm just using a razor blade because of the lip of the drawer front. I didn't really want to sand it, so I just used a razor blade there. And you can see it comes off really easy with the sandpaper. It just gives it a really clean cut. And I did take my sandpaper and distress a little bit of the front of the drawer. So here I have these jars that I want to set inside of that drawer and put like florals in it. So I'm giving each jar a coat of slick stick so that way my chalk paint would have something to adhere to. It just makes it more durable when you go to paint glass like this. It's just the slick stick gives your paint something to grab onto. So you wanna give it a good coat and then you wanna let it dry 24 hours. So I came back the next day and I chose a tea rose, drop cloth and dry dried sage and I'm giving each jar uh, two coats of in each color. I think these colors pair really good with the drawer. It's just a little bit of a pop of a color but it's not too bright. So after it was all nice and dry I went through and uh, sealed up the chalk paint with a coat of white wax and that just helped mute the the colors even more because I didn't want them to be bright. Um, so then after the white wax sat on it for a little while, I just took a, a towel and I just wiped off the excess and there you go. So those bunnies that I did, I'm, here I'm just sanding them again to make sure that the paint is nice and smooth. Um, and then I decided to add some transfers to the little bunnies to just give them a little bit of character. So I had these two pieces that were just from another transfer and then I got the floral transfer and I added the flower to the one bunny. So you just want to lay your transfer on there and use the stick that it comes with and then just burnish it into the uh, bunny. You want to rub it good enough and as you go to peel up that top coat you want to make sure that it's completely on there and then I like to take a towel and just kind of like rub the transfer a little bit more so that way I can make sure that it's completely burnished into the to the piece and then I take my sand and sponge and then I just lightly go over it and give it a little bit of this dressing and I think these turned out really cute so on these bunnies um, they're just little cheap resin bunnies they were brown originally, so I decided to give them a coat of the fluff to just make them white. And then I have these little wood log slices um, that I'm going to attach them to. So because they were so white, I came through with the white wax and then I took a little bit of the black wax and just kind of shaded in around their feet and their ears and stuff just to give them a little bit of age. I didn't want them to look dirty, so I didn't cover the whole bunnies in the black wax. I just, I just wanted to give them a little bit of a shadow. So you can see here, I've got the wood slices and my E6000 was giving me trouble. Um, but I used E6000 and a little bit of hot glue to really get it to stick in. And then I had some of this moss stuff and I just hot glued them around the bunnies on the log.
I think these guys turned out so cute. But I did struggle with my E6000. <laughs> Yeah, I just fell in love with these guys. These are so cute. So um, I was making a bunch of butterflies for my daughter to put on a jewelry box. And I decided to make one for myself because we both had these little boxes. They're just plain wood craft boxes. Um, and she wanted to put a bunch of butterflies on it. So that's why I'm making so many uh, butterflies with the clay mold but I kept one for myself so I could do a little project with it. They all came out really good, I was happy. The antennas on these butterflies are hard to get out, but they are easy to reattach. So here's the little boxes that we both had. I painted mine in drop cloth and I just, after I went around the hardware, I just kind of took a paper towel and just lightly wiped it back off before it dried all the way and I gave it a good coat of the drop cloth and then I used a sand and sponge and I just lightly sanded it to make sure that it was all smooth and then I have this stamp and I'm just going to stamp the top of my box you want to make sure to firmly put it on there but not let it slide and just let it completely dry. I was okay that it wasn't all the way covered um, because I ended up going through and, and lightly distressing it after it was all the way dry to, to give it that aged look. I didn't want it to look exactly perfect. But I took my clay mold that I made and I painted it in vintage duck egg. And then I'm just gonna use some wood glue and I'm gonna apply my butterfly to the top of my box. And that's that. Um, I had a lot of fun, even though I did have some hiccups along the way through this transformation, but I'm really pleased with how everything turned out. All right, guys. So if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and follow us on Facebook to see more items like this throughout the store. We'll see you guys next time.